So welcome to another uh, edition of Ozark Voices Oral History Project. My name is Tom Peters. I'm the Dean of Library Services at Missouri State University. Today's date is August 10th, 2017. And our special guest today is Danny Hauser. Danny, welcome. Thank you. I say welcome. welcome. We're in your home in Nixon. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much for uh, uh, agreeing to meet with us today. You're quite well. Well, I want to talk about your life. And, um, you know, we first met... Uh, Last week, was it? That's correct. Yeah. Unfortunately, at a funeral of a friend and colleague of yours, uh, Jane Whitlater. Um, and uh, that's when I learned that you were a promenader. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about promenading. But first, where where were you born? I was born at Hurley, Missouri. Okay. About a mile south of there. I lived on a farm down okay. there. Hurley's in Stone County? Stone County, Missouri. South yes. of north, end, north, north end of Stone County. Okay. What year were you born? I was born in 1935. Okay. Uh, so what was it like growing up uh, in Stone County uh, in the 30s and 40s? It was pretty rough yeah. growing up there. That yeah. was just after the Depression. It was pretty well over. The World War II was coming on. Yeah. My dad thought he was going to get drafted and sold all of the cattle and stuff and then didn't and, uh -huh. and had to go to... California for three different summers working out there to make some money because we couldn't, kept thinking they were going to draft him, we couldn't. couldn't so the whole family him. go out there to California? No, oh, we, just, we did not. He'd go out and then... Uh, he went out and packed fruit out there and then, uh -huh. then uh, come back and be there through the winter and stuff. He was only out there like three months every summer. Uh -huh. and, uh, we so it was tough, huh? It was a little tough. We, we didn't have a car, we had no electricity and, and we had no indoor plumbing and that kind of thing until REA finally came through. And I honestly don't remember what year that was. Yeah. Probably about 42, I imagine. Was it a big thing when electricity came to your area? When what? Well, when electricity came, when? Oh yeah, that yeah. changed our whole lives. We, yeah. You know, we we could have, have a refrigerator and we could have uh -huh. indoor plumbing and we could have all those things, water in the house. So you think it was 42 somewhere around there? Yeah, I think that's Before the war? Right. Yeah, just started the war pretty well when it got into Stone County, or our part of Stone County. Uh huh. Anyway. Uh -huh. Um, so you, you grew up in a rural area on a farm? Yeah, on a farm. It, yeah. was, it was a rough Stone County farm. It was uh -huh. a lot of hills. We did not crop farm. Uh -huh. Dad had a patch of alfalfa and, and he got into beef cattle. He raised sheep some. Uh -huh. He bought another 40 acres of his brush and bought some goats. Take care of it, and <laughs> so this they they made this a living for us. Yeah, it, you didn't grow. Did you grow anything like strawberries or apples or? We grew cucumbers one time for that were for sale, and uh, we'd sell them. But other than that, why well, we we raised our own garden and stuff, so we uh -huh. had all the you know some of all that. Yeah, but you didn't you didn't not, raise it for not uh, commercially. Yeah, okay. Uh, where'd you go to high school? I went to high school at Hurley. I went to high school all 12, I mean, to Hurley all 12 years. Uh -huh. And right out of that, into, into college, that was something my folks were determined, particularly my mom, that I was going to be able to do. You were going to go to college? I was going to go to college, and I was going to be a coach. Uh -huh. <laughs> What'd she want you to coach? <laughs> well, I, she didn't particularly care what I was coaching. She just insisted if I wanted to go to college that I was going to be able to do it. And uh -huh. we made it work. Uh-huh. Um, so you came, came up to M SMS? SMS, and, and my high school coach brought me up, introduced me around, got me a job as a custodian at the college, introduced me to the placement director, and and uh, really helped me because it was safe. We we didn't know a whole lot about it. And, yeah. Uh, so was, what, what was your first impression of SMS when you, when you got up to well, campus? There, I don't really remember any particular impression. I just know he showed us around. He even went, took us down, and got me a room in a in a ladies' home that kept boys, uh -huh. and uh, down on Dawson Street. Uh -huh. There were like fifteen boys in that in that house, and uh, that's what I remember more than anything. That and the fact that I had did have a job to start with. Yeah. So you were living in a house with fifteen other uh, college students. About fifteen students. total, yeah. I think. Yeah, college students and. Yes. Uh, so, what was a typical week when you were in college? Would you, I mean, how, how, how would a typical week work for you? Sunday night, I would ride a bus 
up to Springfield and catch the city bus out to, to Donaldson. Uh -huh. Friday night, I'd go back home the same way. Uh -huh. And uh, so a typical day was just getting up, going in and doing a little sweeping around. And I had the library and the, and the old administration building was part of my cleaning duties and putting up the uh, flag. So you were actually a custodian in the library well, in that in that building, yes. In Carrington, what now we now call Carrington Hall, the original building on campus. Yeah, yeah. At that, that time, they called it the administration building. Yeah. And uh, so I started that way, and then I would attend the classes, and then uh, do you know whatever you do at that time. Yeah. Do, do what's said. Now I've heard various reports of where the library was located in located in the It was located at that time on the second floor of that administration building. Second floor north end. Uh, pretty much, it was on the north end that, that I remember, but I think maybe it stretched down to, through there or was. Uh -huh. It was not a very big library in retrospect, uh -huh. but for a boy from Hurley, it was pretty big. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but did you study in the library at all? No, oh. did not. <laughs> did not. Didn't use it for study. It was not set up really, I don't think, for a lot of people. To, not a lot of tables in there. There were only like 1,800 students when, yeah. when I started. Yeah. What did you study? I was uh, I started out with PE and, and I had a math class and I'm not sure English at the beginning just the basic subjects. Well, what we call core courses. Right. What did you end up majoring in? I was majoring in physical education uh -huh. and I had well, and you had to get a minor in biology so I did that but I also picked up a major in mathematics I mean a minor in mathematics at the uh -huh. same time. Okay. And then just to complete your edu formal education, so then you went on and got a master's degree at Mizzou? I, actually, I, I did, but now this, it was a long story, but oh. I, I took three of the summer semesters at, S I mean, terms at SMS. Uh -huh. And, but it was through the University of Missouri that was when they had the co-op program. Uh -huh. And I had to go back to the fourth one to the university to finish up. Oh, okay. So you were kind of working on your advanced degree? Yeah, my, my, my wife was, was, finishing up her bachelor's at the same time. That's why I decided to go ahead and work on my master's. Okay. So, um, how did you meet your wife? At college. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of fuzzy, but I think probably pretty well. She only lived across the street. And there was a grocery store on the corner. And I lived on one side of that, and she lived across the street on the other. But we probably, at least at the square dances up uh, on campus, might have been uh, where we really first met. Was she a square dancer? No, she oh. wasn't. But she, I mean, a lot of people went to the square dance there, whether they, yeah. 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 So when did you get interested in dancing? Well, my folks square danced, so I knew how to square dance. It was the old-fashioned square dance. It wasn't the Western style, which we did at, yeah. at college. Uh-huh. Mm. And you always enjoyed dancing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. <laughs> You still dance? No, oh, okay. <laughs> don't do it. Actually, you just didn't have time for a lot of years, yeah. so we never did get back to it. Just got away from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how did you get involved with the Promenaders? We were. They had a square dance ever as I remember. It was Tuesday nights at at the women's gym or on the outside on the on the patio thing there, and uh, Elodie Keller was a caller and. Uh, you could join, and everybody that came was, you know, you could just come and, and everybody, dance. Everybody got to dance, yeah. And uh, they, but <clears throat> the promenaders, well, they called them all promenaders that time, it was a promenader square dance club, mm -hmm. and it was affiliated with the college. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Mr. McDonald and Mrs. Bud took mm -hmm. a, some of the trips with some of them. Now, that was before my time, but they, they took, they would sponsor them, I mean, as a, as a sponsored activity of the college. Really? And they they were doing it, got to do an exhibitions at different places for different organizations and whatever. Yeah. And uh, so some of them moved into that, not nearly all of them that, that were joined the club. And I was there dancing and some of the girls came over and said, well, we, we practice out at Mr. Keller's barn. I didn't know what that was, but, yeah. and we'd like you to come out and practice us. That's how I got into the, the so the girls invited, young women invited you to come yeah, out and that was, practice with them. Remember this, between Korea and Vietnam, and boys were turned over 
yeah. rather rapidly. Yeah. And the girls stayed with it quite a bit longer. Yeah. So that was. Uh, um, so Florence Baker Bug, did you did you know her? Who? Florence Baker Bug. Oh yeah, she. I was supposed to say she was one of the sponsors, and I yeah. had at least a couple of dances uh, classes under her. One of them was modern dance, and. I, <laughs> and so that that was interesting. <laughs> I'm thinking that you didn't like modern dance too much. Oh, that's okay if this wasn't what I was used to. I had to yeah. learn new things. Yeah. Um, what kind of a what kind of a teacher was she? As far as I remember, she did a good job of teaching. She yeah. Was, she she had a good personality. She was a good good person and as a sponsor of the promenade, which why you know we got along well with her. So she and Professor McDonald would, uh, you know, today we'd call it an amateur group or a yes, club, yes. And, and they would go and perform at various places. That's correct. Yeah. Would they be like competitions? Sometimes. I, one of the competitions was at Eureka Springs at, uh, before my time, and uh, they took two sets down there, and they had one they called the number one set and number two, and the number two set took first place. <laughs> <laughs> and they other them took second. So oh, okay. they won. So the next year, I was dancing by then, and actually we were already professional by then, and uh, we were not allowed to enter the competition week, but we did go down as an exhibition pro. team. You've gone pro. Mm -hmm. So when did you get involved with Promenade? Was it 54? I got, yes, fall of 54. Okay, that's when you got involved? And yes. So would you practice every week? Yes, we had uh, one night a week we went out to... Mr. Keller's barn and practice in yeah. addition to the dancing there at the college. Yeah. Uh, what, do you remember what night of the week it was? I think it was Wednesday night. Wednesday that's night. What, that's my remembering. So you'd go out and um, I think I know where his house was. It's still standing. It's now a um, uh, one of those uh, historic kind of facilities, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, on North Glenstone? Well, it was out on, yeah, Florida Street. Yeah, just, off, off, just yeah. off Glenstone. He was on Florida Street. Just first. south of the mainline Frisco tracks. I, probably, yeah. I don't yeah. remember for sure. And he had a barn? He called it his, his dance barn because he held dances for other people, too. He, uh -huh. he, and he was a postal worker. He worked for the United States Post Office. What did he do, do you know? No, I really don't. Okay, but you knew he worked for the USPS. He did, and they were so nice to him. They let him get off to go and travel with us. So he would take, you know, he'd get time off or take vacation time or something. something. I really, you know, I wasn't really interested. I just know they let him go. Yeah. Did you ever meet his wife? Yes. Yeah? How was she? She seemed, she was a jovial person, and she yeah. liked, she was in the square dancing too. Oh, really? So yeah, they both? She, I don't remember her dancing, but... Uh, but I understood that she really, she encouraged everybody. Yeah. So when did the promenaders go pro? And, and uh, actually, the I would say the spring, uh, well, or early winter of 1955. Really? Now, we made one trip at least and maybe two to Columbia what, to do the Jubilee. I remember one specifically. All right. I want to hear about that because I know about the Jubilee early on when they were doing the national broadcast. They, they go, couldn't go, they couldn't upload a national... Did not have a cable out of Springfield. Out of Springfield. So you had to get on a bus, go up to Columbia. That's correct. So yeah. tell us, if you have any vivid memories of that, tell us I, about that. Well, there are two or three different memories I remember. One, number one, we stopped at Camden to Nighthawk Fay, and that yeah. was an experience. <laughs> and, that, and that, by the way, was Buford Foster. Yeah. Right? And Did you ever meet Buford? Yeah, oh yeah, and yeah. Buford had the tadpole dance, yeah. square dance team that was on the Jubilee Summit. So do you, how did, how did Buford, was it through you stopping that he found out about the Jubilee? And I imagine everybody knew about the Jubilee pretty well by then. Yeah. I don't know, I really don't know how he found out. And yeah. I, but somehow he got, they got a hold of the people that were in charge of the show and they, uh, yeah. they let, let them Try out and let him come on. What kind of a person was Buford? Was he? Uh, he he was uh, seemed like a really nice guy. wasn't around him a lot. But yeah. I, yeah. He, he so what about what about the Nighthawk? What was you said? Well, that was a place. What was that? Well, was just something about. I mean, I hadn't eaten out in a lot of restaurants, you know. And yeah. uh, but the Nighthawk Cafe that just that stuck in my mind very much. Yeah. And then later on, when I started teaching, well, we were only twenty five miles from Camden. Then. You were at Eldon for a while. Well, that was the later on. Oh. We started out at Climax Springs. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's where we started teaching. And 
That's 25 miles from Camden, so we'd eat over there once in a while. Go into town, go into the big yeah. city of Camden. Didn't I just had to go over there to get a haircut and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> it, it, so back to the trip. So you're on this bus. What okay. time did you leave in the morning? Did you go? I don't you remember. Probably like, probably like 6 o'clock or something, because we'd eat a meal there, and we'd get on in. A normal, a normal rehearsal on the Jubilee started about 9 in the morning. So I've got a feeling it was doing it up there, but I... I can't tell you. Okay. Do you remember riding on the bus? Was riding it, on the bus. What would you do? Sleep or uh, pr play? Probably, or? well, I, that far we probably didn't do anything but visit and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't remember a whole lot of But it was just a bus full. Was it one bus or multiple buses that would go up to? One bus is all I remember for, for that, yes. So that everybody on there, the production team, all the performers? They, I don't remember the production team being on there. They probably were on another. Okay. I don't know that for sure. Okay. But you stop at the Nighthawk, get some breakfast. And go on up. And other than that, it was just a pretty normal thing. We'd go on, we'd do a walk through, and then we'd do a time rehearsal, and then we'd do the show. Yeah. And, and it was kind of cramped, wasn't it, up at the well, camp? It was. It was yeah. cramped. It, even the Jubilee stage was fairly cramped for us on for some things. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so you'd already turned professional by then, so you were being paid for... Yes. We were being paid from the time we started going up there. We uh -huh. just, yeah, yeah. And how, how was that decision made to go pro? We got an invitation to be on there and who would turn it down? Yeah. I don't remember any decision being made. We just had, didn't know, you know, we just did. Was LD sort of your business manager as well? He became that. We, we worked out a deal where he was a... He was the manager and the caller, and I can't remember. There seemed like there was another title he had with him, but he, yeah. but he was our manager for most of the time that I was, there. and I guess for most of the time they were in play. Yeah, we had to split for a little while, and yeah. Um, I don't, I, I, I don't come from a dancing family, so talk about the caller. What's you know, how important is a, is a caller calling the shots, basically, telling you what to do? Yeah. Or, yes. Or is it more like, you know what you're going to do, and he's just reminding you? Uh, in, in the case of the, we knew what we were going to do. But it helps you to know it, and he, he would lead us just enough that, that you would, you know, if you did let your mind wander a while, yeah. you could... You could get it, and but uh, but we knew what we were going to do at, at all time. Now, his part on the jubilee was being a in the, you know, he'd be uh, part of part of the show because they'd show him, and then you yeah. could hear him calling and yeah. everything, and that was a big part of it. You'll see it on the DVD. They did, they did, they did this one thing where they have uh, two images sort of mirrored over each other, yeah. so you'd see you dancing, you all dancing, and then they'd see all the. I think it might have been Buster Fellows playing the fiddle. Yeah, Buster while. played sometimes. And, yeah. Uh, um, so, so let's just talk about performing on the Ozark Jubilee. Uh, uh, you also performed when you when the when when it came to to the Jewel Theater. Yes. Yes. That's when we really became the number one square dance show. I mean, when we were, went on the first time, the cards and letters just poured in. Nobody had seen that speed and, and the jigging and all combined. Yeah. Mr. Keller had that turntable that he could speed up. It was a variable speed, speed and we were running, and we have, we have difference of opinion on what we do. I, as I remember, we're doing 180 beats a minute. Wow. And 120 is normal. So. That's three every second. Yeah, and, and you better be, uh, Hitting them at the same time because you're wearing jingle taps. Yeah. So. Uh, oh, really? So he'd hear when somebody got off, or you could hear it when somebody got off. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that. But the, when we came, and so they made us the official team at that time. Now I understand later on there was one of the others that they started alternating, but I think yeah, part Wagon of Wheelers. Uh, uh, yeah, and Gary Ellison. And Gary Ellison, and Wagon Wheelers. Yeah. And uh, but I think also. Part of that was that they were on the road so much at that time. They were yeah. out doing shows for me. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go out on the road? A lot. Yeah. yeah. At the last like during the week? Wouldn't they I, yeah. yeah. 
it got to where that was. Tuesday night you'd be in Kabul and... You well, know. the ones around here were no problem, but it was the ones like 31 days of Jane Autry oh, yeah, and yeah. then then two weeks in Canada and yeah. then another two weeks in Chicago. And I know the Jubilee did at least one show out of Detroit. You know, I, I didn't do any of the show, Oklahoma Jubilee City. shows. Yeah, well, they did, but they weren't on the tele. They were not the Jubilee. I mean, yeah. we they did a lot of shows. We traveled quite a bit with them. Yeah. That that one that I showed you the flyer yeah. of was was the Jubilee yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, what was it like performing on national live television? You know what? I we just enjoyed doing what we were doing so much. It didn't really the impact that it was not what you would think it might be because. We're just doing what we enjoyed doing. We felt like we were doing a good job of it, and I, you know. You never felt like nine million sets of eyes were watching us, and actually, it didn't bother anyway. I, I just, yeah. We just we had the live audience out there, and uh, we. So it was more about more, it was more about the live audience than the television audience. Yeah, well, right? except oh, that at that time the cameras were in the way. I mean, <laughs> as far as as far as the audience seeing you and oh and really? Seeing, yeah, they. That was one of the, those cameras are big. I know you've seen pictures yeah, of them. Yeah. And they had three of them out there, as I remember, rolling around. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah. Now, as a dancer, you didn't have to know which one was live. You were just dancing. But, well, uh, we didn't. No, it wasn't that important to us knowing as long as. Yeah. Because we were, we were going to do what we were going to do anyway, and we had an X on the floor we were circled around. And, yeah. Um, what was it hot? Under those lights, lights, yes, yes, yeah. it was hot. Was that it? Was that uh, was that tough to dance? You know, people didn't want to see you sweat on national TV. And well, it wasn't. It was everywhere we danced is hot uh, because it just was. You've got yeah. bright lights and stuff, and they, and they are. And yeah. I guess we were young then, and so we could handle it. Yeah. So uh, you know, like on the December third, nineteen fifty-five, you danced. Right coming into the show, like the opening credits. We and then you danced at least three other times during the ninety minutes. So what you do between when you were on? Okay, let, let me explain what we did normally do on okay. that. Each thirty minute segment was a different segment, and the and the, uh, the radio or the television stations out there could pick any any or all of them. Right. So they started every one of them the same. Yeah. And, uh, Almost like it was a self-contained thirty yeah. minutes. Yeah. But uh, but they also you we had Foley in there would mention well we're back again. Yeah. Sometimes, but you, we'd do an opening, we would do a dance normally, and then we would close the thirty yeah. minutes, and we did that. And so on, on an hour and a half show, we'd have three openings and three dances and three closures. Normally. So for each thirty minutes, you were about you were on then about 15 minutes into it you dance again about wherever another, they put us yeah another 15 minutes and you'd be doing dancing dancing the and, and what did we do in between that in the jewel theater that there was a place in the back where we wander around there and watch it had a railing uh -huh. in behind the seats usually we'd go out there oh back behind the seats so you were behind, behind the, the audience you were uh, behind the some of the time anyway yeah. we could or we could stay backstage whatever yeah but, a lot of times we went back out there. Yeah, you remember? Did you ever? Did you ever converse with any of the other uh, people performing on the Jubilee? Do I now? Do you? Did you then? Were you? Were you oh, they. Yeah. yeah, we were just kind of one big family. Porter Wagner and Porter. Uh, Brenda Lee. Yes, Brenda Lee was uh, when we went. We had a trip in Washington D.C. We went up the Washington Monument together. She walked up with the boys, and the girls all rode the elevator. That's Brenda, when you. That's when you could do that. Brenda climbed. Uh, climbed she up. She climbed them with the boys. <laughs> she was probably ten, maybe. Yeah. You know. she, was she. We never knew energy? how old she was for sure. Was she as full of energy off screen as she was? Yes, yes yeah. she was. Yeah. And she was just a little girl. I mean, and, yeah. and her mom would let her go with the promenaders to things like that. Yeah. She watched her pretty close otherwise. Yeah, but, okay. Uh, did you ever have any interaction with Porter Wagner? When we, he was on? we did a lot of things with Porter. Porter was just, he was just getting started and yeah. we played cards and we did. Really? All those, yeah, on, on, when we were going somewhere, we'd be yeah. backstage where we'd play cards and uh, waiting on time for the show or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Any other memories of uh, uh, you know interacting with the other members of the cast and crew? 
I, it just seemed like that. Now the ones that coming in were, you know, didn't know us as well. But right. the ones that were like Speedy and yeah. and Slim and Bob White and, and yeah. all of that crew, why? It was just like they, we, it? yeah, we did visit with all the time. You know. And you did it every week. It, it almost every week. As I say, they had other square dance clubs in occasionally, or if we had a show somewhere else, they would use one of the other square yeah. dance clubs. But basically, we were on almost every week. Uh, now they had the tadpoles on a lot. Look at those tadpoles. What did you make of them? Did you, you know, did they, were they competition or? Uh, no, yeah. you know, they really to us they weren't competition. We didn't feel like they were. Uh, we knew that they were there, and uh, they. Uh, I don't know. I, it wasn't a competition. It was. It was just right there, just like the jigalongs and or the jigs and all of those. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we felt like they were getting yeah. something. So you mentioned you got a lot of letters. So did you, did the, did the dancers respond they, or? They, no, I, I, we didn't get them individually, but they just sent them into the shows and they were at, to the Jubilee and they'd yeah. come in the red Foley or however they were addressed. But we got a lot of response on, on out of those letters. I'm imagining it's uh, positive. Yes. That, it, Everybody that loved the promenaders. Seemed to do that, and yeah. uh, it's uh, we we had good good luck with that, and that's why we were on so much because it, it really helped. Yeah. Now back to when you were practicing in the barn, uh, I remember reading something. I think it was in uh, maybe you read a Spear Stewart book about the Jubilee that when you'd practice, the women dancers got a little bit frustrated because other young men women who would come out who were like girlfriends of the male dancers that was more than you believe and they called them the distractions because <laughs> i don't remember that on the on the practice and it may have happened i don't i don't remember it i yeah i don't think i ever had anyone go out there with me distraction so. yeah i just i don't remember it anyway yeah you remember anything like uh you know i don't mean i don't want to call up bad memories but did you ever have a you know, a routine where somebody slipped and fell, or you just totally messed it up, or you know, it was live national television with no. Now, when we see, what we think is a live program. There's an eight-second delay built in, so that yeah. if something happens, they can cut to black. Uh, but it was truly live back then. You were dancing. It was truly live. You did what you did. We had one one time that I can remember when one of the girls didn't show in time for the dance on the on the final one at the end of the show, and Gary Greer, one of the boys, grabbed the broom and brought it out, and we passed it around as we were dancing just like it was a girl. I doubt it. So it was I don't three, know whether it, three women and, and four men and a broom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and cause. Because we did not do any complicated things on the openings and closings. Oh, okay. And so it was pretty routine, but I don't know what made him grab that room, but he did. He brought it right on out there, and, and we just acted like it was normal. Now, whether that made the TV, I don't know. You remember laughing about it when you got off? Oh, yeah. We still, we still laugh about it occasionally. Dancing and, with the broom. And, uh, well, now, I don't think this was on TV, but one of the girls with petticoats came on the rough and started spinning. You know? <laughs> but, so we did, we did have some embarrassing moments. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but overall, it generally went well. And, oh, uh, yeah. We, so you mentioned something just now that opening and closing sequence was a simple dance, a relatively simple yeah. dance. So did you see your middle dance as the one where you could really shine and show your stuff? And, yeah, because you know. we never knew whether we were on on that opening and closing. They may be on red, they may be on us, they may be on the right. audience, they may be overlapping. Right, them. and they're not going to show you for the whole dance, they're no. just coming in, no. you know, no. and, and going out, and so you're just dancing. So we did, a, we did pretty simple stuff on that, just to yeah. keep the jigging up and keep it up. I can't remember if you told me last week, but on the December 3rd, 55, were you in that group that yes. was dancing? Yes, I was okay. dancing with Gene at, at that okay. time. Do you remember, though, 
I think it was the middle sequence where Red danced with you for a little bit. He was kind of hopping around with the... I, I remember Red dancing with us once, and I remember uh, Jean, June Carter stepping in and doing oh, a little really? bit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, they would do that occasionally. And, and I've seen the issue where uh, Slim Wilson did. I was not there that night. Yeah. But, uh, so what did you think when one of the other stars would get, you know, did you kind of resent that? that they'd be... Oh, no, that that was that was great. Yeah. We enjoyed <laughs> Boy, that, usually we knew it was going to happen, so yeah. it wasn't. Uh, now, did this lead to other gigs for the Promenaders? Oh yeah, that that's what got us got us started. Did there, you almost have no, more, more than you could handle? I don't know what was turned down, really, for sure. We just knew what we what we were told that we were booked to do, and we went. But but I'm sure it got us a, the open the first real what I just called a professional job. I, I guess Jubilee was because we were getting paid. But we went to New Orleans for four weeks. Yeah, I, I Blue like, Room. Blue Room of the Roosevelt Hotel. Yeah. I was 19 years old. Spent a month down there. We did. and we had, What are your memories of that trip? I remember lots about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, it really was great. We were doing two shows every day at 7.30 at night and 12.15 in the morning. And then twelve was, fifteen, a late late show, huh? And they were they were called dinner theater, and then the, the I don't know what they served them. I don't remember that. And then on Sunday we did a, a three o'clock show too in the afternoon. So we did three on Sunday. Wow! And uh, and they still do a twelve fifteen a.m. show on early Monday morning, huh? <laughs> they did, <laughs> and people were there. I mean, they they filled the thing. I yeah. I don't know it. Seemed like a lot of money to me at the time, I'm sure, but it... So you must have slept in pretty late with your... We slept when we wanted to. Performed. We when we wanted to. We, we were not... Mr. Keller did not chaperone us in the sense that we had a chaperone. We were, we were adults and we were on our own. own. And uh, when I think back, you know, going to New Orleans at age 19 and uh, being turned loose for four weeks, uh, you wonder... <laughs> but we, we survived it, and yeah. <laughs> but there was a quartet down there, the Four Coins, that were a little old, probably a little older than we were, maybe not much. Yeah. And we made, got friends with them, we'd go out to Lake Poncho train, swim and stuff. So. Really? Yeah. It, so overall it was a pleasant memory. Oh yeah, you know, Every, I, that's all pleasant memories practically. The, yeah. the riding was uh, in the cars and sometimes got old, riding on the bus with when Gene Autry's church got old. Yeah, so you went on tour with Gene Autry. We did for 31 days and I uh, did, I think, 31 shows. Really? At, Every uh, night? Yeah, sometimes we do one in the afternoon and, and one at night, but yeah. mostly not. And it was all, it was in dead winter. And uh, it was started out up in northern Illinois, went to Milwaukee, and then went across the north and up to Bangor, Maine. Oh. And back then, back down to Charlotte, South Carolina, is where we ended up. But yeah. but we were going there, and a lot of those shows up there were on uh, ice rinks. I mean, they, oh. they they put flooring over the ice, and that's where the audience sat. Really? And, and we were up on the stage, of course. But yeah, oh boy, it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. So is it tough dancing in the cold? I asked about the heat, but now is it well, tough? Well, actually. I don't think it was a problem, you know. You, yeah. I, but I just don't remember problems of the dancing. I mean, yeah. you know, we. Uh, so you mentioned that L.D. Keller was not really. He didn't. He didn't see himself as a chaperone. He wasn't like doing bed checks or anything. No, or, he didn't. Um, how was he as a teacher, as an instructor? He was a good instructor. He he taught square dancing and and he was a good caller. And we had we had a breakup for a short time with yeah. him, but but it was not over that. It was over we felt like he was keeping too much of the money. Yeah, it was a money and, issue. And so, they, I didn't go in. I was a couple of the boys went over and talked to him. And they came back, and we broke up for a while. Really. And we were still on the jubilee, and he tried to start another square dance team, and neither one of us felt like we were very successful. So. Got back together and worked out the details. And yeah. Were you involved in the uh, getting back together part of it? I was not involved. I was not, I was not a business person. I yeah, just, you just wanted to dance. I just yeah. wanted to dance. That's the truth. Yeah. And I, what money we got was great. You yeah. Know. So you stayed on full time through 57? Yes. And then yeah. what happened? 57. I had gotten married during that time and we'd started a family. Oh, okay. And late in 
my wife Stella and I had a disagreement over this a little bit, but she finally said, I think it's time you get a real job. <laughs> and then here it is, late summer, and I'm wanting to be a coach, and I thought, there's no way. But anyway, I went over to the placement office and talked to Miss Ponder, and there was a couple of jobs open, and I wound up getting one of them, and uh, so that's how it got. But I still... And your first job was up by Camden? Yeah, Climax Springs. Climax and, Springs. And I still was go, coming back and dancing on Saturday night. They were allowing me to do that. Oh, so you, were, you, didn't, you didn't have a clean break? I did not have a break until the end, until I got in the late in the ba basketball season when we started having tournaments on Saturday occasionally. Yeah, yeah. And so broke up, and then in '58 I came back and danced when they need to fill in, and '59 I came back and danced, and I think my last show was in uh, uh, the De the Christmas show in 1959. I think okay. it was my last one. Did you know it was going to be your last one at the time? Or? No, I, yeah. I never, you never knew. You know when you just had a fizzle call. out. And, and by then, I did not know most of the dancers. Most of them that I had danced with were, were gone. And yeah. I can look at that video, which I have. It's the one that they ran for promotional on Channel 21 when yeah. they were raising funds, and yeah. they did the whole show. Yeah. And uh, most of them I didn't know. I, I have a hard time calling names, even, and I, even though I have names listed. Yeah. Was it tough to dance with people you didn't really know? I don't remember it being a problem at all. And, okay. they, and from looking at the video, I don't think so. Does every dancer have a style? Yes. And you sort of have to know his or her style. Yeah. And there's some some partners that you just are easier with. Yeah. And Trust and issues and things like that. And you learn you learn how to, on the swings, how to lean back and just enough to balance each other. And, yeah. and on all those kind of things are, are, are just... And it doesn't take long to learn. Very intricate, one. though. Yeah, you know, and there's is. there's some fundamental trust there. About. There's some things there that people don't see that are yeah. I mean, they get they just look natural and they are after yeah. a short time. But um, you know, so I'm not a dancer, and I'm not I'm not a uh, student of dance. Um, but as I watch some of these Jubilee episodes, it seems to me that there are. I'd call them sort of minor imperfections are always happening. You know, somebody kind of misses a hook or whatever they call it, you know, and and you learn, it's like, if you make a minor mistake, just keep dancing, you know, That's just right. go on, you know. Nope. Uh, sometimes it seems like maybe somebody lost their partner there, and then they just keep dancing and they get back together. and, and uh, It can happen. Yeah. You, know, you miss, a, miss a hook or something or a right and left, you know, it's just, yeah. and uh, you get just a little bit off, and it doesn't take long to get back and think. But, but you learn early on, just keep everybody, dancing. Well, and everybody will probably slow up enough to give you a chance. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's, say, it's a team. Yeah, it's a team, and it's a team effort, and yeah. and you don't just stop when somebody makes a mistake, no. or, you know, unless it's a total fall or something. Well, like that would probably, probably wouldn't stop then. If we'll go, whoever was there would help them up, and you keep going. Yeah, but if it's just for the small stuff, you just kept dancing. And corrected as you went. You know? yeah. Yeah. It, and and LD, you know, of course, he was calling, and he would he could hesitate or he could speed it up a little if somebody got him. Yeah. Right. And so LD normally was the caller. He was the caller almost all the time. Yes. Yeah. He he was with the group when they started. He was with them when they quit. All right. And um, you were somebody told me that generally you had ten dancers, five men, five women. And two of them were sort of you know, understudies or on call or... Well, usually if we were going for a period of time, we always took five couples. Yeah. Took five. Uh, if we were going just for over, for one show somewhere, we might only take four because uh -huh. it didn't want to split the money away. And uh, there were part of the time when you get in a position where four and five may alternate. Yeah. They would... They put one couple of set out and the other couple of dance, one dance or something oh, like that. Okay. So everybody got to dance. Yeah, usually yeah. except, as I say, there's according to how much dancing we were doing, how much they would get to fit in. Yeah. But, uh, and you normally had a, a, a steady partner, yes. so to speak? Yes. And who were, who were your steady partner? I started out with Gene Licklider. Now, we were in the number four position, which is the okay. last position. Number two is across. In normal square dancing, you normally do a figure four times in each couple of weeks. In ours, we did 
a figure one time, then we do another figure and another figure according uh -huh. to the length of time, and the number one couple led all the time. And all the time, unless it was a the kind where the one and three do. But anyway, those are the two, and so uh, you uh, would do that. And so I start out in the number four position, and then as the boys would would uh, leave for whatever reason, military or what, you you'd usually gravitate. And I went from four to three, and there I had had the same partner all the time for a while. I had two different partners in that position, but. Uh, uh -huh. And then, then when Joe Williams left to the Air Force, I moved into the number one position, and I was there for probably a year and a half. So is the number one position considered, uh, it's you want your best dancers overall? I, I, I don't know if I was the best dancer, but anyway, uh, Jean and I got along well, and she'd been there. She was once, Jean, like, I mean, Jean Ruth, I'm talking about now. Oh, the number one position the whole time I was dancing. Really? With, and boys different, different, different men. Through. Yeah. Different men. And uh, we, we danced very well together and so uh -huh. that's, you know, yeah. seeing how, how people fit. Now, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but after all these years, did you think that there were any dancers that were just head and shoulders above the rest in terms of skill Not, and not really, the smoothest dancer, is in, in the way I remember it, was Jerry Hill. And Jerry Hill, uh, and he and Gene were partners when I went on there. And They were number one? They were number one, and, and I looked up Jerry, I patterned after Jerry uh -huh. in a, in a lot of ways ago, and that. I learned the things from him. And uh, he, uh, to me, he was probably the best. He and Gene Ruth, if I had to pick a couple, that would be them. And I, yeah. it, you know, I felt like all of us did a good job. Yeah. I felt like we worked well together. And, yeah. And did it affect your studies at all? A lot. <laughs> and I'm not talking about grades necessarily, but I wound up taking nine years to graduate. Yeah. And, uh, Part of that was the dancing, and then part of it, I took the teaching job, and it took, yeah. and it was four years there. You were working full time then. I was working full time, and I finally let it out a year and finished my degree. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the dancing interrupted. It also interrupted my ROTC, which I thought I was going to go through. I uh -huh. I had signed up for advanced ROTC. Everybody took ROTC back then for two years. Yeah. And I had signed up for the advance, and I went through one, and then we got the chance to go to New Orleans, and I went in and resigned from the ROTC. And, uh, so it, it changed my life a lot, but yeah. I don't regret a minute of it. You'd do it again? I'd do it again. Yeah. I might do it a little differently yeah. if I could see in the future, because I could have done some things that would have, would have let me move a little quicker on some of the other things. But all in all, I think it worked out very well. Yeah. Well, you're more than just a promenader. So you went on, you became a, a high school instructor, eventually a high school administrator, right? Actually, I, yeah, I went from that. was eight years teaching and coaching, uh -huh. two years as a high school principal, and 21 as a superintendent of schools. Yeah, quite a career. And I, I somewhere I saw uh, Kabul, Eldon, Rogersville. I started out at Jasper, uh -huh. went, went to Kabul, then Eldon, and then finished up at Rogersville. So uh -huh. that was my superintendencies. Uh -huh. And then after that, I worked five and a half years as administrator for a group of orthopedic surgeons. Really? One of them had been on my board out at Rogersville. And, when and I they got, needed an administrator? They or? were needing one, and they yeah. gave me a call and said, if you're interested, come up and talk to us. So I did. So when you were retired or semi-retired, you were living in Kimberling City for a while? We moved to Kimberling City after I retired from working with the doctors. Yeah. I went down there and in 95. Uh -huh. Moved back up here the next day at 11. So we were down there about six, or six, 12, about 17 years. 17 years down in Kimberling City. Mm -hmm. What was that like? It was probably the best years of my life, and I not because we were there, but because I got involved with missions at our church. Uh -huh. And if you see that plaque, I made two trips to India. We built four churches over there, our church did, and I was over there for the dedication of two of them. And I just feel like that's 
I think God guided my life up to that point with that in mind. So you you were you were a missionary in India? Well, I went over there to dedicate churches that we built. I was over there two weeks, two different times. Yeah. What are your memories of India? And I tell you why I feel so sorry for the people of India and what they're going through, and so proud of what. Central India Christian Missions doing for them yeah. and the works being done there and it's just I'm proud that I got to be a part of that. And yeah, I've never been to myself, never been myself, but I know friends have gone over and they, you know, I remember one one of my uh, college uh, fellows came back and said, "We have no idea what poverty is." No, we don't. We don't. When we talk about the poor in America, we're not talking about the poor in India. No. We were, we were out in the villages and we were dedicating them a church that they never had and they, they were so grateful to get a little old building, tin roof building and yeah. stuff. And yeah. It's just, and they, I mean, water and the necessities of life are just a we challenge for them. Yeah. It's just, that, no, we don't know what, what poverty is. And it had such an impression on my granddaughters. Right there is a, one of the things she did. They adopted a little girl from India up at the top in oh, that yeah. picture. Yeah. And so she said that's the reason we decided on India. Yeah. And uh, so it's, uh, yeah. that was, that's was that been the best part of my life. Yeah. Uh, now you're in Nixa and uh, enjoying life. And Enjoy life, yeah, and uh, getting older, and yeah, we're all getting not older. able to do like we'd like That's to do. Right. We 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 camped for a pull pull a fifth wheel trailer for twenty four years, all you know through. Yeah, what most of it while we were at uh, Kimberly, Kimberly City. Kimberly City. And so you do a lot of RVing, and we did with yeah. fifth wheel. Yeah. Um, you, I saw somewhere that you, you visited every every uh, of the forty eight contiguous states. It, I have been in all the forty eight. We've had a, we had our trailers in forty six. I might even go in Rhode oh. Island, New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did not want in that traffic. Over yeah. And that, that's I, I've been to Rhode Island when we danced some Providence on the old Otter tour, and now I didn't want I didn't want to pull over in that traffic. Pull on trailer. No. Uh, did you ever go RVing into the Ozarks in just different places in the Ozarks? Oh yeah, a lot of places. We've been to all the state parks and yeah. things, and Pettit Jean in Arkansas. And yeah. Do you have a favorite spot in the Ozarks? Mm. Not really a, a favorite camping spot. I mean, yeah. I think where I was raised is just about as pretty as there is. And that, yeah. Uh, that that picture up there on the wall of yeah. that where we lived and uh, a mile south of Hurley. Yeah, just about a mile. Is the is the farmstead still there? Uh, my the house that I it's up there burned down not, oh. about four years ago, oh, and yeah. uh, the fellow that had it put a tray a uh, mobile home back in there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a my granddad's house is up up the, on the hill that he built back in eighteen hundreds. It's still yeah. standing there. And, yeah. And that's the one I was born in. It's one my dad was born in. And, uh, so that's where we're going to have our final resting too. All right. <laughs> well, Danny, thanks so much for taking some time to uh, talk with us this afternoon. Well, you're welcome. And I'm pleased that I got a chance to be with you. And I'm, I'm really pleased I had the opportunity to be on the Ozark Jubilee. Thank you very much. Yeah.